What's up, y'all? All right, so we are on site today outside of Charleston, South Carolina at a building that I'm buying in a really cool planned community. This community, downtown Main Street area, was built in 2005. And one of the properties, which is a mixed use building, just came up for sale. And so this building right here behind me is a mixed use building with a restaurant on the ground floor and then two townhouse style apartments above it. And it's a, a smaller deal, but it's a great property in a great area that we can in-house manage, put some great financing in place and hold forever. And that's my buying criteria. That's my buy box today. A lot of the other properties and stuff that I bought uh, were fantastic and helped me build up my balance sheet and helped me, uh, you know, kind of created a stepping stone to get into nicer long-term holds. Uh, the things that I'm buying right now are just built in the past 25 years or newer. We in-house manage it. We could put great debt in place on it and they're in great A and B class kind of communities. And so that's exactly what this is. And it's just, it's a nice, easy base hit win for myself, for the team for the morale of the team and the morale of the management company of just having good, easy properties that we can get excited about and have in our rental portfolio. So how did we find this deal? I found it listed on the market, right? Everybody's talking about there's no deals out there, you can't find opportunities. I got this one listed on LoopNet and I saw it pop up, I sent a message over to my broker, said, hey man, can you reach out to this seller? Can you reach out to their agent? Let's put in an offer on this thing. I like uh, the vibe of it. I like the pictures, everything makes sense. I didn't wait to come to the property. I didn't inspect it first. I, didn't, I, I knew what I wanted and I made an offer on it immediately. Here's the thing, I went in because it was a good deal at the asking price. I made an offer at the asking price. I didn't try to take the seller's legs out. I didn't try to beat them up. I just went in at what exactly they were asking and I said, hey, Here's what the terms are. I wanna buy it. It's a good deal. I'm not trying to be a pig and beat up the seller on that stuff. I think, again, if it's a good deal in a good area and it makes sense for you, then you buy the deal. Guess what, the next, and I sent this over to my agent around 10 o'clock on a Monday night. By 2 p.m. the next day, we had a signed ratified contract with the seller. The seller uh, actually called up my agent and said, hey man, my phone's just ringing off the hook right now. I think I might have underpriced this thing or you know, I, 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 I could have probably charged more because of how much demand there is for it. So hey, I totally get it, appreciate you working with us. You know, We're very serious, we're very qualified buyers and we will close on this thing. And when you have that kind of a reputation over and over and over again, it takes time to build, all of a sudden it gives you that much more posture when you're talking with sellers and you're able to kind of get into deals and get to the table of negotiations and closing on deals that some other people don't get to participate in. So high level financials on the building is it brings in about $105,000 a year in gross revenue. The expenses are around 30 to 35,000, depending on management fees and maintenance and some reserves and some other stuff. So let's call it 35 grand. It nets $70,000 a year and I'm buying it for 865. That means it's about an 8% cap rate at its current in place rents and the downstairs tenant has 4% annual escalations on their rent. Uh, they got about a year left on the term with another five year option. The upstairs tenant is about 10% below market rate, uh, but I'm not trying to rock the boat, right? They're, they're good tenants, they pay rent every single month. I'm not gonna change anything on that front. And then, and then the other unit is used as an Airbnb. And the current owner uses it about half of the year in order to stay in it for themselves. So if we run it as an Airbnb, we don't need to stay in it. We should be able to juice the rents on the, um, on the short-term rental side of things and push that up. If the other tenant ever moves out, we might even turn that into an Airbnb and be able to generate a lot more revenue uh, from that side too. All in all, I'm buying into a deal that's an 8% return on investment, built less than 20 years ago, in place cash flow from day one, I can get great financing from day one, it's a great long-term hold, and an easy base hit. A few years down the road, as uh, rents bump up on the Airbnb, eventually we'll bump up some rents on the other tenant or turn that into a uh, Airbnb. As those, these little escalations pop with the commercial tenant, all of a sudden, this is a property that I'm buying for 865 and it's worth 1.2, 1.3 million dollars a few years down the road. Not only that, but I've paid down some principal balance on the loan and we're building some long-term wealth. So the moral of the story is, it doesn't have to be a 100 unit apartment complex. It can be base hit. 
and base hits win ball games. Just keep on hitting base hit, base hit, base hit. Keep the momentum going, keep the snowball rolling. And when you pick your head up in five, 10, 20 years from now, and you look around, you're gonna have a fantastic portfolio that's paid down a bunch of principal on the, on the loan balances, that's appreciated over time, and you're sitting on millions, maybe tens of millions of dollars of equity in your rental portfolio. So I hope this is helpful. We're gonna be doing more case studies about deals like these as we are, are back in acquisition mode in a big way, and I'm excited to share all these with you guys. So appreciate you being here. Make sure you like, subscribe, share the, share the video with somebody else who will get some good value out of it. Give me your greatest comments below. Appreciate you, be your best.